Hello, welcome back. Now we're going to continue our discussion of historic uh, capital market history by formally defining risk. Um, the two measures of risk we're going to first look at is called variance and standard deviation. Variance, uh, these are both statistical terms. So both variance and standard deviation measures the volatility of the year-to-year um, -year or day-to-day -day return of various financial securities. So the greater the volatility, or the, meaning the greater the variance or the greater the standard deviation, the greater is the risk associated with that particular um, asset. So in order to compute variance and standard deviation, we first have to compute the arithmetic average. And we have seen this, we've seen the average return. So to compute the average is relatively straightforward. You take the return in year one, year two, however many years. So you have t years of return, you add it up, and you divide it by the number of years. So it's a simple arithmetic average. The variance is defined as the square deviation. So to compute the variance, we take the return from year one, subtract from it the average return. So that's where this comes from. And then we square that difference. So that's where the variance comes from. So this is the um, symbol for variance. Uh, sometimes it is referred to as sigma or sigma square. Um, and you may see a formula that's slightly more complicated than this, but this is just a, uh, that's just a mathematical way to write out this expression more compactly. Uh, I like to write it out in this way because it's easier to work with. And we want to divide that the sum of those square deviations by t minus 1. So if you have t years, so for example, you, you have 5 years worth of observation, then you divide it by 4. 5 minus 1 will be 4. Uh, the reason we subtract 1 from there is because we are computing what statisticians call a sample variance. And we subtract 1 to correct for the degrees of freedom. Uh, if you are familiar with statistics, this will make sense to you. If you're not, you'll learn about this more in, uh, in, in the statistics course um, that is part of the MBA program. So in here, I just want to introduce that concept and make sure that we are using the terms correctly. Once we have computed the variance, we can compute the standard deviation. Standard deviation is denoted by the symbol sigma and is simply the square root of the variance. So this may seem a lot. We're going to go for an example to demonstrate how we apply this. So we have um, collected three years of data. We have returns from year one, year two, and year three on a particular stock. And this stock generated an 8% return in year one. It lose or it has a loss of 6% in year 2 and has a return of 10% in year 3. So first thing we're going to do is compute the average. So the average return will be 8% plus a negative 6% plus a positive 10% divided by 3 because we have 3 years worth of data. So our average return is 4% on this investment. And I just want to emphasize the concept of average. We saw that there's a lot of statistics that you read such as the large company stock you earn and you can earn 11.6 percent by investing in the stock market on average each year but in this case you see that you can earn four percent on average each year but you don't really get four percent in any given one year instead you, you get eight percent in one year you lose six percent in the next year and you get ten percent the year after the same is true for stock market you can gain and lose money in each year and the average is simply that is an, is an average. Next, we're going to compute um, the variance. So remember to compute the variance, we take the return in each year and then we square and then we have to square the deviation. So for the year one, we have eight percent minus the average. Remember the average is four percent. And we want to square that. So to compute the variance, this is the first step. And we do that every single year. So we have 8% in year one, and then minus 6% in year two. And then the third year, we have 10%. Again, we subtract that by the average of 4%, and we square that. Now, all of this, we're going to divide at the end by 
3 minus 1 because we have 3 years and we have to subtract 1 from that. So the first term here then becomes minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.04 is 0 0.04 square. The second term here we have minus 0 0.06 minus 0 0.04 together we have minus 0 0.1 and we have to square that. And here we have 0 0.1 minus 0 0.04 that give us 0 0.06. Again, we'll square that. And remember, that all of it at the end will be divided by 2. So you can work out the, the rest of the arithmetic. And in the end, you're going to come up with the variance. Did you get 0 0.0076? Again, I encourage you to pause the video and really follow through. Use your own calculator to go through the calculation and make sure, to make sure that you understand how the numbers are derived. So 0 0.0076 is the variance of this stock. And last, we can compute the standard deviation. Remember that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is simply the square root of 0 0.0076. So that's 0 0.0876. And that's 8.72%. Oh, so another thing that I want to emphasize is that for both the average return, we can express that as a percentage. For the standard deviation, we can also express that as a percentage. But for the variance, it is not a percentage. The variance is 0 0.0076. Congratulations, you have learned how to compute standard deviations and variance. Now let's take a look at the historic return combined with the historic uh, standard deviation for the various categories of investment. So we have already seen that small stock give us the highest return of 16.5%. We saw that the line is the most jagged, but now we can look at the standard deviation. It also has the highest standard uh, similarly, for large company stock, it has the second highest return and the second highest standard deviation. One of the anomaly that we see in here is that long-term government bond, uh, corporate bond actually have a lower standard deviation, but a higher return compared to long-term government bond. This is one of those anom anomaly that we haven't uh, really uh, had a good explanation for. Except that long-term government bond typically is really, really long-term. When we talk about long-term government bond, it's typically 30 years. Whereas corporate bond, even if they're long-term, some of them are not as long. So there's a lot more diversity in long-term uh, corporate bonds. Some, long some corporate bonds are 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Some can be as long as 100 years. So there's a uh, it's not as... Um, homogeneous, a, a, a population as government bond. Government bond is long-term government bond is 30 years, whereas intermediate government bond is 15 years. And you see that those has a much lower standard deviation. So you can think of the corporate bond as a combination of long-term and, and intermediate term government bond. And in that light, the standard deviation may make more sense. And then the other interesting thing is the U.S. TBO actually has a lower standard deviation than inflation. And there's a good reason for that uh, because the, um, the Federal Reserve, in fact, um, one of their uh, policy directive is to maintain a low and stable inflation. So there's government intervention um, through the use of Treasury bill to impact inflation. So inflation is not directly under the government's control, whereas the T-bill is. So you'll see that the T-bill actually have a smoother or more, uh, return or changes over time compared to inflation. The general picture we saw in here are uh, that there is a positive relationship between risk and return. Higher return is definitely associated with higher risk. Uh, another way that you can look at risk in addition to standard deviation is look at the, the distribution. So the wider the distribution, see how wide this distribution is, the higher the risk. Whereas if you, the distribution is very concentrated, then it has a lower risk. The way that you can look at this is a think of throwing a dot at the distribution. 
and each of these bar is magnetized. So if you have a very concentrated distribution, that means most of the time you're going to hit here. This is going to be your return because this is the most likely outcome. Uh, there's a very, very small chance that you'll get this return. Whereas in here, even though this is your most likely outcome, there, this is just almost quite likely. Um, so in, especially if you look at the large company return uh, stocks, you see that many possible outcomes have similar probability of occurring. Um, whereas smaller stock, you see that you have potential for big gain, but also a pretty high potential for great losses. So again, this is this is an, this is another way to look at risk.